Andrew, look at this. Look at this kid. Look at the stock. Look at the hair. He's solid. He's a good looking kid. He's a good looking kid. I think the world need, needs more Greek gods. I more think we, Greek gods. Yeah, Zeus. need to have more kids. That's right. You want a brother or sister? But uh, Andrew, I had a bisectomy. That's no problem. We'll do a vasectomy reversal. We can do that. We can do that. Reverse it. Yeah. You hear that boy? Reversal. All right. Reverse it. It's pretty cool. Reverse it. Nice. Hey guys, Nick Drosos, Dr. Andrew Steinberg, and welcome to another episode of Have the Balls to Talk About. It. And today we're going to be talking about vasectomy, reversal vasectomy. Reversal vasectomy. So I had a vasectomy 10 years ago. How was that? Um, for me, it was like, you know, it, it was it was a little bit brutal. I hated it. I remember yeah, he was like... You're, you, you are not the best patient. <laughs> no, I'm, let's be honest. Like, playing with the, my balls, and I, I just, I just I, I felt it was a little bit like, you know, he's, he's, and I just felt like... Did you go to a urologist? You went to the butcher shop. <laughs> a urologist, but I still I still remember the experience. And it's funny. Did he use his teeth? And it's funny, I actually, I'm going to share the story. Uh, I remember he told me to wear a tight underwear. Yeah. Right. But I, you know, you're in the moment and, you know, and I thought he said wear a loose underwear. So I was wearing no underwear. I was loose. And two days later, I'm in pain because I feel like they're pulling down. And I remember calling him. He's like, what did I tell you? Tight underwear, not loose underwear. <laughs> so, um, so let's talk about reversing a vasectomy. Um, so I, I've heard about it and I actually heard it hurts more to reverse it. Okay. So first of all, when patients to ask me when they're coming for a vasectomy, is it reversible? Yeah. The first thing I say is, it is, but. A vasectomy reversal is a lot more complicated than a vasectomy. Okay. So as you know, vasectomy is, is a 10, 12 minute procedure under local freezing. 10, 12? I felt like it was two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Again, are you sure you went to a urologist? <laughs> so, um, and, and it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a vasectomy reversal, and about five to ten percent of men will actually go for a vasectomy, who've had vasectomies, will go for a vasectomy reversal. And I've even had patients who've come to me for a vasectomy after they've done vasectomy reversal, vasectomy reversal. <laughs> I want to meet this guy. So, <laughs> happens sometimes, and uh, so um, so yes, it's a vasectomy reversal is possible for sure, um, but it is it is a little bit more, a lot more involved than a vasectomy. So vasectomy yeah. is easy because we just make a little incision, cut the tubes, you can burn them, you can clip them, put a stitch on it, whatever, okay? But the, the vasectomy looks like, like a little uh, piece of spaghetti with a small lumen inside where the sperm travels, okay? Like the size of a, a needle tip. So you have to remember that if you want to connect the two ends, they have to be perfectly aligned, the, and not just the whole yeah. spaghetti, but the, the tubes. You have to attach them at the same exact So level. you have to, right. So we do that with uh, micro sutures. And these sutures are, are, are as thin as your and I hair, and that's thin. <laughs> so, you know, you're, you, we often do it with these microscopes. It, it's, I don't do a lot. I, I've done once or two only just when I was training. It's not my specialty. But um, so there is, there is your specialty, specialists who do yeah, this. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, any urologist would say they do it, but. Uh, it's good to go to one who has experience. Okay. The success rates are better, and you do it. And it's good to do under the, the microscope. It's this microscope, and you're looking through this microscope, and you're you're, like you're suturing thing. with your with these little little tiny wow. tiny instruments um, to really approximate the the lumen or the hole in the tube together. And uh, because of that, uh, one it's 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 done under anesthesia, so usually done under usually done under spinal or general anesthesia. Okay. And it could be, you know, a one to two hour procedure. No way. Yeah. So for one, two hours, why wouldn't they just put you to sleep? They, usually, they, often, they usually do. Okay. They usually do. So it's two hours yeah. instead, so instead why, of 15 minutes. So why does it take like, you know, 15 minutes for a vasectomy? Because a vasectomy is just cut, cut, go, you know? Okay. Here it's, it's like I said, it's all, you know, first of all, you have to find the two ends, which is usually not a big deal. And often there's scar tissue around it. So you have to clean up till you get to good ends. 
you know, sometimes there's all that scar tissue or it forms a little granuloma, a little ball of a hard ball around it. So that has to be removed and you have to sort of cut a little bit until you get to the good, healthy uh, vas. Some doctors, some, some especially more advanced or more fertility special will actually check the liquid coming out from the testicular okay. side to see if there's sperm in it. Okay. You know, and, and, and if there's not, they often do what's called a, a vasoepididymostomy. They'll actually... They'll Why act do they pick these complicated words? Doctors? Yeah, they'll actually, uh, they'll actually connect, instead of vas to vas, a vasovasostomy, they'll connect it right to the epididymis. Okay. And, and, and you, you, know, you need to be trained well to that. So that's why, you know, going to someone who's well-trained, you probably have a higher success rate. Um, What's the success rate of it? The success rate uh, is about, you know, 80 to 90%. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it depends on a couple of things. So the, the longer you wait after your vasectomy, uh, the, the rate starts to drop a little bit. And what's, what's longer? Five years, 10 years? 15? Yeah, five, seven years in that, okay. that ballpark. And, uh, you know, uh, like all healing things, smokers, diabetics uh, have a less of a, have a, have a rate. And, and some of these things, you also don't know what the fertility was beforehand. So, um, you know, it's, it's the same thing when we do other procedures. When they blame it on the procedure that the mm. fertility is now low, but what was it in the beginning? You know, what was it early on? And we, we often don't know what the sperm count was beforehand, but, but generally it's, 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 it's quite successful. Oh. And uh, it's not a big surgery. Healing is uh, There's no risk factors to it, Andrew? You know, from the, from the surgery, I mean, like any surgery, nothing specific, but you can have some bleeding and infection and testicle and pain. Um, but there's no like high, there's do, no high risk to it or any, any kind. No, no. And we often do, uh, we often do, it, it can be done. Some men will have this feeling of congestion and chronic testicular pain after a vasectomy. And there are some doctors which will, in those cases which have failed, anti-inflammatories and a cord block, which is an injection, I do that, of steroids and pain medication to the nerves. They will actually reverse the vasectomy to try to improve the pain. So bring them back to what they... Bring them back to what they were before. And it, it does help a, you know, a certain amount of people. It's a rare thing. But uh, for someone who's had a vasectomy and has had chronic pain mm -hmm. since then, uh, something, something to consider. But, um, no, I mean, other than a little bit of bleeding infection and, and some pain, sort of the regular kind of, um, the regular kind of, uh, of um, post-operative mm -hmm. complications, mm -hmm. nothing specific. You do have to remember when we're talking about patients who have had vasectomies and, and then reconnection, we talk about the fertility rate afterwards, is that often uh, the, the partner is older than they were when they got it. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's, you know, of course, if you're had it at, at 40 and now you're 50, but your girlfriend is 30, that's not what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But if you had it when you were 30 with your wife and now you're 42, both of you, and, and, and you want to have another kid for whatever reason, she's maybe less fertile. Mm, so point. even though you may be producing yeah. good sperm, your total fertility level may be but I'm lower assuming because of that. Once you do the reversal, like, is it instant? Like, I'm uh, pretty instant. Pretty instant. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because your testicles don't stop producing sperm. Okay. That's a good point. So it's just connecting it together. It's just connecting it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. In fact, if you, some men for, uh, who have a blockage from a vasectomy or so on, if you want to go to uh, artificial insist, uh, assisted uh, fertility mm -hmm. or, or in vitro fertility, they can actually, in the epididymis, put in a, a needle and uh, aspirate uh, to remove the sperm and then okay. inject that. Wow. I can tell you a funny story on that once. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was a medical student, uh, a medical student in urology, and at that time, you know, things were less controlled than they were today. And there was one of the doctors, one of the urologists used to go and he used to aspirate sperm for fertility. And um, so he, he said, uh, Andrew, go up and, and, and just take care of that for me. There's a patient there waiting for you. I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. He said, just put a little needle and aspirate there and take out the sperm, then you give it to the technician. So I go there and, and we feel his testicles, I feel where it should be and aspirate and I put it in this little petri dish and the technician takes it, looks under the microscope, no, there's no sperm, we need to do it again. Okay, I come in, I do it again, aspirate, I feel the testicle, put it in the little liquid in the petri dish, 
And uh, the guy goes, no, no sperm. I do it three or four times, no sperm, no sperm. <laughs> so and, the guy freaking and out. And the guy, the guy said, uh, you know that that testicle was removed and that's a prosthesis there. <laughs> <laughs> so I was aspirating his little uh, plastic testicles. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, I felt quite stupid. Well, I guess he should have told you, right? He should have like, told you. Yeah, he should have yeah, told yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so I think it's something to think about. Like, I mean... Uh, well, I, you have a, a, a beautiful, great son. Great son. I think the Greek world owes another, <laughs> Greek, another Greek god. So we're going to do it live. Nick's vasectomy. Uh, uh, reversal. reversal. Uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think the message would be if you're going to have a vasectomy, make sure you're... I mean, you're never sure, but I guess the idea as is much to as you can. be as, as, as sure as possible. And yeah. I guess if you decide to reverse it, you're at 80, 90%, which is good. No risk. So yeah. I think, guys, at the end, just, you know, think about it. And if you decide to get a reversal, go with the expert. Yeah, shop around and go with someone who's, who's got experience. And don't, are, and don't go to the guy that did Nick's vasectomy. <laughs> no, I call him the butcher. <laughs> On that note, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have the balls to talk about it. And make sure to leave us a comment, subscribe, hit the bell. And we'll see you guys next week.